Wages were rising faster under Trump in three years than they did for eight under Obama. Most of those gains in terms of wage increases were actually happening disproportionately at the bottom half of the scale. Okay, the fact is that Americans were doing unprecedentedly well under Donald Trump's economy until COVID hit. And the reason for that is obvious. Donald Trump cut taxes. Donald Trump cut regulations. Donald Trump created an environment where people felt safe and secure investing in their workers, investing in their business. Under Barack Obama, we had the slowest recovery in the history of the United States. Under Donald Trump, the economy continued to accelerate and accelerated much faster under Trump than it did under Obama. This is true in terms of wages, particularly. It is true in terms of living standards. It is true in terms of the, the unemployment rate under Barack Obama was significantly higher on average than it was under Donald Trump by the time of the election, uh, by the time of, of COVID. We had the lowest unemployment rate for the last 50 years. Median income under Donald Trump rose 9.2% under Donald Trump. That's the median income data until 2019. Under Barack Obama, over the course of his entire presidency, it rose 5%. Writes, the Trump administration on Wednesday reported $23 billion in savings from 176 deregulatory actions in fiscal year 2018. Even more consequential, the administration has issued 65% fewer significant rules, those with costs that exceed $100 million a year than the Obama administration, 51% fewer than the Bush administration after 22 months in office expanding exemptions to the Obamacare contraceptive coverage mandate for religious beliefs. Annual regulatory costs under the Obama administration increased by $122 billion, by the way. The administration, the administration capped its regulatory costs at $18 billion. Another part of the, Obama, the, the Trump record that was really, really good were the tax cuts. The tax cuts cut taxes for people across the board, which is why now Joe Biden when he says he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts, he finally admitted he means he's only going to repeal part of the Trump tax cuts because it turns out that those Trump tax cuts helped pretty much everybody on the income spectrum. So long as you are making an income and paying income tax in the United States, an income tax cut under President Trump's tax plan helped you. In fact, the only people attended to hurt were high income earners in blue states. The poverty rate as of 2019 was at an all time low in the United States. About 4.2 million fewer people were living in poverty in the United States in 2019 compared to 2018. He obviously used his presidential power to appoint originalist judges to the best of his ability. I mean, like hundreds and hundreds of them. He's pursued pro-life policy. So for example, he reinstated the Mexico City policy to prevent taxpayer funding of abortions overseas. He signed an executive order stating that faith-based employers and organizations like Little Sisters of the Poor could not be forced to violate religious beliefs to comply with Obamacare. And he's defended various religious people from having their religious beliefs violated when states attempted to go after them for failures to abide by the social strictures that the left prefers. He's pursued pro-life policy. So for example, he reinstated the Mexico City policy to prevent taxpayer funding of abortions overseas. He signed an executive order stating that faith-based employers and organizations like Little Sisters of the Poor could not be forced to violate religious beliefs to comply with Obamacare. And he's defended various religious people from having their religious beliefs violated when states attempted to go after them for failures to abide by the social strictures that the left prefers. So Title IX restrictions had been used to basically suggest that colleges were allowed to run these kangaroo courts where if somebody was accused of sexual assault or sexual harassment on a college campus, you couldn't defend yourself. There were these star chamber courts where essentially you're accused of something. You don't get to confront the accuser. You don't really get to testify on your own behalf in many cases. You don't get the evidence produced against you. And the standard of proof is basically nil. And you can get kicked out of school. Anybody can allege anything. It was really, really horrible. Betsy DeVos, is secretary, the Secretary of Education, the Department of Education, they redid the, uh, the way the due process is performed on college campuses under Title IX. The Trump administration has stood by police as well they should. The most important accomplishment that Trump made during COVID, though, was that he refused to take control via the federal government of every aspect of Americans' life. You know if a Democrat were in charge, we would have been talking about national lockdowns. You know if a Democrat were in charge, they would have used every ability at their disposal in order to seize control of private means of production. There was a call to do that through the Defense Production Act. He's actually created unprecedented peace and prosperity in regions that have not seen it in quite a while. So his most obvious accomplishments have been in the Middle East. On a, on a personal level, I have great appreciation as a Jew for the fact that Donald Trump moved the embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, that the terrorist leadership of the Palestinians had not wanted to make peace, 
that all of their goals on peace had nothing to do with territory. It had nothing to do with actually achieving a Palestinian state. It was all directed at violence. I mean, there are peace agreements all over the Middle East now. He dumped out of the idiotic Iran deal. The Iran deal was a lie that was foisted on the American people by the Obama administration. The lie was there were moderates in Iran who would be emboldened if the United States signed over billions of dollars and opened the gate to hundreds of billions of dollars in commerce to an Iranian terrorist regime that supported the murder of American soldiers in Iraq, supported the full-scale destruction of the state of Israel, supported the overthrow of the Saudi regime. Right, the Obama administration said, you can use that money for terrorism, fine. Just promise us that you're not going to develop nukes for 10 years. The Paris Accords would not alleviate climate change in any serious way. Even if all nations abided by the Paris Accords, it would marginally lower the temperature over the course of the next century. The Paris Accords were not being abided by by India. They were not being abided by by China. Trump dumped out of them because they are, in fact, stupid. On foreign policy, I think it is also worth noting that Donald Trump has not started any new wars. Isn't that kind of a thing? He has stood up to the Russians. He has stood up to the Chinese. President Trump famously spoke at Mount Rushmore. He gave what I thought was an absolutely unobjectionable speech. Not only unobjectionable, necessary speech, talking about American values and their enduring purpose and principle and talking about the evils of a disintegrationist philosophy that wishes to tear down the nation on the false basis that America is racist, sexist, bigoted, and homophobic from its roots. There's a whole group of woke people in the United States who believe that freedom of the press, freedom of speech, the rights to bear arms, these rights are in and of themselves the threat to you. They are a threat to me. They are a threat to everything good and decent. 